Good evening. It's over, folks. The Toronto Raptors lose, of course. Uh, perfect game to end the season. 118-103 to loss against the Miami Heat. It was everything you thought it would be. It was a uh, uncompetitive. Jalen McDaniels, Malik Williams missing 155 shots combined, and it's just it's, it was it was beautiful. Um, and it's it's done. It's over. The the season from hell, uh, which was. A term coined by Richard Lewis, apparently, from it's a curb joke. He died earlier this year. A lot of bad things happened this year on the court, off the court. But it's done, it is over. You got playoff basketball coming up. There's a million matchups happening right now that I'm too dumb to understand what they mean, but there's a lot of important shit happening. But yeah, it's it's done. And what you saw tonight, most of these players will not be on the Raptors team next year. I mean, what, what a terrible season! It like I grew up watching the Canucks and following them relatively closely through a pretty dark part of the franchise, and uh, yeah, it was this was. It's funny they got the more we got more Bobby the random Bobby interview. They spliced that into the game, and he mentioned like one of the strengths of Darko was because uh, they were like, yeah, the fifteen game losing streak. They didn't like go off the edge of the cliff, whatever that means. And Darko kind of kept their, kept the vibes light and everything, and so it's kind of like it's kind of telling that they probably you know foresaw this coming. So they wanted uh, more of a vibey situation so that, like, you know, the Jordan Juarez, Malik Williams, Jalen McDaniels can go out there uninhibited, play free basketball to their heart's desires. But, yeah, you knew this game was going to be. I mean, you got no RJ, no quickly. It's kind of been the only reason you'd watch <laughs> these games recently or take much from these games. Uh I guess like the highlight of this whole game for me was Alvin butchering the best joke he had all year. And then Devlin, we'll get to that. But then Devlin saying one, so one thirty. we need to do a game maybe later in the stream where like Devlin's catchphrases as baseball position. So like starting at shortstop, we have 14 point game starting at center field. We have X years of age. Starting at right field, many people are saying, starting at left field, you know, you look at a guy like starting at third base, you know, people around the team are saying, you know, many people have said, many people are saying, you look at a guy like, you look at a team like many people are talking about, but uh, he went on this weird kind of, I don't think he even knew what he was saying. To be honest, and then Alvin had nothing. He's just like, he just kind of let it sit there because it made absolutely no sense. He said that there's a belief around Miami. So whatever that means. It, I don't know if he was walking up and down uh, Biscayne Boulevard, which I believe is a real place. Was he, uh, I don't know if he was like walking around uh, interviewing random people. But he said there was a feeling that this Miami team, a feeling, it's a feeling, not a direct quote, not anybody in particular, but a feeling. There's a feeling in Miami, unsourced, that this team does not have what it takes to do what last year's team did because there's no Kyle Lowry. Um, he also, But then he also was like, there's no Kyle and Jimmy. But Jimmy's still there. He wasn't in this game, but he's Jimmy Butler's still on the team. So, it, and he, he he I don't think he even knew where he was going with that. And then Alvin just let it sit there. Um, Alvin had a great Wedgie Miller joke, but he's like, "Hey, it's like Reggie Williams. Uh, I mean, I mean Reggie Miller. No, it's like Wedgie Miller." It's like, 
You could like fuck man, that was perfect. Why didn't Game eighty two, you finally had like a great punchline, but the setup was whatever. Uh season's over. Devlin also Devlin was on one this game. He said uh I don't know if the Heat were expecting this much intensity today. Because uh, so I think 24 24 after the f- end of the first quarter, and then the Miami Heat outscored the Raptors, I think, 43 22 in the second quarter. So he went on 10 separate 10 0 runs in the second quarter. Um, just yeah, the note, the notes, the notes from this game. The Raptors need a wing so badly. Abaji is lost, man. He's fucking so lost. He's just. It's, it's it's wow, um, yeah. So you got uh, yeah more. Where's this Bobby interview? Can someone link me this Bobby interview that they've randomly spliced in the last couple of games? Because he kind of stays stays so hidden. Uh, yeah, Thomas Bryant in this game. I think he had like twelve rebounds. Whenever I think of Thomas Bryant, I th- there was a period of time where I listened to David Thorpe's podcasts for a month or two i don't know why i just kind of stopped listening to nba podcasts pretty much there's a couple i still listen to once in a while but nothing personal just kind of changed changed my life around i got my life straightened out but my favorite thing about the thorpe podcast is he would always make a point to say that he never talks about the players that he works with because it's like professional relationship but he would mention working with thomas bryant every segment like every single segment they'd be talking about scotty barnes's like shockers or uh the new york knicks pick and roll or something and it would always go back to like something that happened with thomas bryant so i, I always think about i always think about david thorpe when i see thomas bryant and it just it just makes me happy uh at some point bruce brown tonight probably his last game in a raptors jersey you would hope um Maybe Gary's last game in a Raptors jersey. We could talk about that after. Uh, what's going on with the the bar? Post game show here at the bar is a little bit, a little bit quiet. Uh, I thought that plane, I thought the planes would be better. I thought more planes would be doing stuff, but um, something, something, something. Joe Biden. Um, Chris Quinn wanted to travel on a call for Kelly for pivoting. At that moment, it made me realize I was happy Darko was the coach and not Chris Quinn because how did you think that was – it was a clear pivot and he's screaming travel, travel, travel. That's, that's one of my big pet peeves is like the assistant coaches who just put their arms up for a travel because someone – like I know pivoting is quite new. They didn't really pivot before like these last couple of years. Guys like Jalen Brunson, Luca really kind of changed that. But guys are allowed to pivot, okay? Like fuck off, Chris Quinn. Jesus fucking Christ. J- can JFL dribble? Honest question. Can he dribble? Like, it's it's a question. It's a legitimate question. Can he dribble? Is he able to? Yeah, he going two ten oh runs. Uh Grady gets blocked by Bam. He he had a really nice play where like the C kind of opened up, and this happens a lot for Grady. He'll pump fake. Uh, because people have to respect this three nowadays, so he'll pump fake and then he'll drive and he'll get a lane, he'll beat like two or three defenders. But then you know, Bam will be at the rim, Victor Wembanyama will be at the rim, Miles Turner will be at the rim, and instead of like stopping or making a, uh, some kind of read, he tries to challenge them, which is like cool, I guess, audaciously. But he gets blocked a lot on those, so I think he's just I talked about like quickly in RJ's deceleration, it would be cool if Grady learned a couple of those in the offseason it does that does require quite a little bit more leg strength so Grady needs to continue the uh strength program maybe we'll talk later about things that the Raptors players need to do in the offseason um got Hawk has cooking McDaniels on a couple plays and Starko saying yeah uh not not saying this directly, but basically, like Darko's built for the tank. Like he's the perfect guy. Like he's not gonna, he doesn't care if the team loses fifteen in a row. Like he's still gonna listen to like Blues Clues podcast or something. Like everything's cool, everything's great. Um, there was a really funny moment in the fourth quarter where they're they're just kind of talking about the different players, and Devlin's like, "Yeah, McDaniel's 
also on the roster next season. Jalen McDaniels, also going to be on this team next year. And then I had kind of tuned out at that point, but I guess they were talking about Jordan Wara before that. And then Al- right after the Jalen McDaniels is going to be on the team next year, Alvin's just like, yeah, Jordan Wara is an interesting player. <laughs> Oh, man. Who has less chemistry, Matt and Alvin or Jalen McDaniels and basketball? I think he's just really, I don't know. He kind of runs around like a deer that just got hit by a car or something. Like, I can't imagine his sex tapes are all that great. Like, doesn't seem to have a lot of energy. And just, I don't know, just doesn't, it looks like he's more not trying. It looks like a guy who, if you just put him in a pickup run, would probably drop like 60. I think with Malik Williams, I just think he's bad at basketball. I, I like not to be mean, but I think he has a 16% true shooting or something. Like it's it's just something insane. And it's like I don't know if I've ever seen someone with less touch in the NBA before. I mean, I guess he's not really in the NBA, but like I was just, and I was thinking that watching like is this an NBA team? I'm watching an NBA team right now. And they're probably like the lineup they had out there tonight. They're probably G League teams with more. I guess Garrett Temple kind of throws it off the balance, but like more NBA experience than. Yeah, th- this team was kind of like the team we saw, um, like a month ago. Without when it was at the absolute, this was like the fifteen. This was the fifteen game losing streak team, essentially, which was kind of fitting to throw out there from. Like this was the last dance. This was the last dance. The McDaniels, Wara, I guess Williams wasn't there. Um, but, yeah, the season, the season is done. What is, what is the chat? What is the chat? Did you guys, did anybody watch this game? I was also thinking that, like, got you, got, you got this game. Like, could they have made this game any less sexy? I mean, it, it, it's just kind of comical how it all works. It's like, okay, the team you just saw them play, yesterday the game doesn't mean anything it's at like 6 a.m in the morning (laughs) the stadium's half full i mean if you're on the raptors team and you're in i mean i'm i'm i've said before miami was like the scariest place i've ever been if i went to miami i would just like lock myself in a room and cry but i think for most people they like to go out and have fun and and so maybe that was the case for some of them but i don't know just Um, what a, what a, what a, like, there's all these battles for seeds in the East and every game is like so important. You know, everybody's watching the scoreboard for every game. What a blessing the Miami Heat got getting two back a back to back with the Toronto Raptors at the end of the season, uh, when every game is is uh is absolutely paramount is it kind of bad content to do live reacts to the other games that are happening right now i won't i won't i won't like go go into them but just obviously the pacers won 157 115 i mean the hawks had nothing to play for they're already kind of i think locked in with the bulls which just kind of does seem like destiny uh yeah the magic crushed the bucks 113 to 88 I, I just, I cannot wait for the Doc Rivers experience. I was so pissed when Giannis got hurt. This is probably why I'm in therapy. Because, like, my initial thought wasn't like, oh, poor Giannis. Like, I feel bad for him. My initial thought was like, oh, fuck. This lets Doc Rivers off the hook. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry that I'm wired that way. But maybe the content would suck if I were if I wasn't wired or it would suck worse than it, than it already does. But yeah, that was my initial thought. Like, fuck, he's going to, that's like, that's the easiest. I mean, Giannis goes out. It was a calf though. It was a soleus, which I've had a couple soleus issues lately. You want, you want to really hit that soleus. You got to do seated calf raises, go to the seated calf raise machine and load that thing up and you will absolutely hit your soleus. Don't hop around the next day listening to Sepultura because you might, kind of pull it and then when you pull that you've got to uh find a baseball this is the only thing that will work a baseball maybe a golf ball might work probably but a baseball and a wall you can't have a carpet won't work it's too soft you gotta like smash your soleus as hard as you can into the baseball into the wall 
and it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna hurt like insane amounts but then it's gonna feel amazing after so that's what you got to do with your, your fucking soul uh, your soleus um speaking of soleus people in the chat raptors it's finally over raptors ve says it's finally over brother um jar one of the best seasons ever thanks for all the content over the season says patrick poppy you are welcome folks um hope the streams are back next season raptors xv you look at a guy like yeah you look at a guy like is gonna be first base for matt devlin 14 point game is pitcher many people are saying could be center fielder catcher years of age he always says years of age years of age could be he's 25 years of age he's 28 years of age and then the three that can be like right field because a lot of deep shots to right field kind of like a kind of like a three ball when you hit a ball to right field you're kind of shooting a three so that could be the three for three for th insert random player for three and then when it doesn't go in just kind of hangs there. Um, Fourteen point game. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, how was the pregame show today? I missed the. Uh, I missed the pregame show. Unfortunately, I was making breakfast. It felt really bad for. It's like you know, last game of the year. I might check out the pregame show, and then I was yeah making. Beyond Meat sausages and bread and, you know, not good. Coffee. I guess Gary had a good bounce back game, kind of, I guess. He seemed aggressive in the third quarter. Is this game, is it like, am I really opening up the box score? Uh, Jordan Wara, 11 rebounds in 20 minutes. Uh, okay, that, I... Don't have any recollection of that. I feel like I just woke up from a from a dream or something. I don't really know what I just saw. Pretty much this whole season, yeah. Nobody on the Heat was cooking. Like their top scorer, eighteen points. Thomas shouts to Thomas Bryant and uh, Hawkes, both with uh, eighteen. Raptors also highest score is eighteen. Gary Trent six for four. That's a bounce back, I guess, for Gary six for 14, 18 points. Yeah, I mean, there's obviously a million questions. With the offseason, it's so obvious that they need a wing. I don't know if that comes through the draft. Is Cody Williams big enough to be a wing? I think he's like 6'6", but will he grow a little bit more? Is that large enough? I think with Abaji, I would be... Unless he takes a big leak, leak, leap this summer. So he comes out to... Remember that story where like City, everybody was freaking out over Sadiq Bay going to Colorado so that he could train in the mountains, and it was like, you know, the Rachel Nichols and like Bill Simmons of the world were just like losing their minds. It's like, oh my god, it's an incredible story. They, he needs to do something like that. Um. I guess it's a good time to talk about the offseason. Is there anything in anything like in this game that's even I think I kind of touched on everything pretty much. So may as well talk about a little bit of the off season. Yeah. I think the wing the wing's the big hole right now because you know, maybe you can go out and get Ananobi. <laughs> but I think with a Baji you'd be really surprised to see him you know, uh, uh, I guess a guy, he's, he like, to me, where he's at right now, unless there's a big leap, even with his defense, he's a guy off the bench. Just his offensive game is so limited. He'll get, he just gets great passes and just fucks them up. Like, there's a couple plays tonight where he's like, his threes, so many of them are just wide, like, wide open, like, beautiful, tactical, multiple people touching the ball. And then they, they created the advantage by getting him the wide open three. And he just, just fucking misses it so off. Like his three point percentage for the Raptors, it's one of those guys where I don't think it's, I don't think it's even like family friendly. It's really bad. Trash clips. What is a, uh, what is Oshai Baji shooting from three? And then Devlin was saying he's automatic in practice, never misses. It's like that's great. You know, I'm automatic in practice too. Can you get me on the fucking court, Matt Devlin? Like, what are we doing? What are we doing, man? At what at what point does it just become completely Scientology? But anyways, 
Uh, yeah, the wing, the wing position, because it's also like not having a wing affected how Scotty plays defense, because then he kind of had to play defense like a wing, but that's not his strong point because he's bigger than a wing. You're kind of like burning him out at the when he's not like where he's not the most effective it's like not an efficient you, you only have one scotty barnes this team this team has like no talent on it i just for me in my opinion for whatever it's worth i don't like necessarily want you know scotty guarding like luca or whatever and just get him doing what he's good at on defense which is like guarding bigger guys being super imposing at the rim games where he has like five six blocks that's when he's really cooking and if you if you get a wing that's decent, I mean, that would help with that quite a bit. And then it's just it's just a huge hole in the roster. You know, it's like when a baseball team starting a shortstop, many people are saying when a baseball team has that, it's it's just really obvious. And with the Raptors, the Vision Six Nine, they really just like not only do they kill Vision Six Nine. But they tortured it. They took it out back and cut it to pieces and had like rituals and ceremonies. But now it's like, okay, we need a, need a guy who's roughly six nine, <laughs> roughly six nine, maybe a little bit. Uh, has has a little bit. You, you want him to be better at offense than Oshai Baji, or else what's the point? But I, I don't know if I don't know if the bar is that high. Like I don't know, man. I think if you made like Josh Lewenberg. Osha, if you gave like Oshai's body to Josh Lewenberg, like would the dip even really be that noticeable? Let's be honest, folks. Um, backup point guard. I don't know who the backup point guard is, so that's probably an issue. <laughs> They've uh, cycled through about a million of them in the last couple of years. And obviously they brought in Dennis. That didn't work out. They told him that he was going to be like running the team because – of, of Germany he did really well in Germany which I don't know man it's like what if like Davis Bertans went off for Latvia and was like I want to run a team now and then one of his former assistant coaches got a job and then he came in and started putting like YouTube content out about how he lives with seven people and it's like a commune and it's really cool and um, yeah whatever man I don't know what they're going to do with the backup point guard <laughs> You've got obviously three draft picks, so that's that's a nice weapon to have to to fill some stuff out. And you're probably not getting a top pick, so you can you can look a little bit more positionally when you're picking picking a bit later. Um, but I think it's I think it's center. They they seem to be maybe they need a third guy now that uh, Jonte is going to be you know, sent to the shadow realm by fellow gambling enthusiast, connoisseur, um, ambassador, Adam Silver. The dog downstairs won't shut the fuck up. Apologizes. Apologies to that. Um, someone who works with dogs in the neighborhood says that she's bored. That's why she barks all the time. I don't know if I buy that. It's fucking, it's annoying as hell. Wasn't the nice dog you saw on the stream previously. It's the evil evil landlord's dog. Landlord painted our wood fence black. If you, if you want to know what kind of taste taste she has. Beautiful, nice wood fence. Let's paint it let's paint it black to match the salmon pink house. It's um it's pretty horrifying. I think we're getting evicted pretty soon though, so uh, I'll be out on this show. literally be out on the street. I'm not kidding. It's, so it's we'll see evil, if the evil landlord we'll see if the stream We'll see if the streams if the streams come back, it means that like I have food and shelter, and let's paint it. Let's paint you it. You know, a lot of people like there was this guy Mato Mato, and he's like commenting about um, you know, if this if your post game streams take away any juice from your regular videos, you, I need you to stop making them or stop doing them. And then last episode on the live stream, he commented. You know, this broke my heart that it ended so abruptly. I could listen to this for hours, and it's like, what the fuck do you want? What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you people want from me? I'm like one step away from being out on the street, and I got people, you know, telling me what 
We lost the corporate sponsors. We lost the investors. We lost everything, folks. We have nothing. There's nothing left. The season is over. The season. Let's go back to the airport. Cat. I'm going to keep that in there, I guess. I thought these planes would be a little more active. I do plan on moving to Uruguay at some point, but... Then I think with the uh, with the shooting guard position, obviously, that's going to come down to like, you know, what are they going to do with uh, with Gary? I guess that's a pretty controversial. People are pretty like um, they have their opinions on that. I guess it all depends like what he thinks his role is, which is kind of a hacky answer, but it's true. It's like if I think if he sees himself as you know a guy who really wants to get starting minutes, it might be it might be kind of difficult to um, justify that. I've always thought that like you know his value could potentially be as like a bench guy, just like a Doug McDermott, just like all right, buddy, while you're out there, I just want you to launch as many threes as possible in the shortest period of time possible and i don't know if he'd be into that as like a six nine or six whatever i don't know um vegan grass raptors might have a paris game next season in purple jerseys i really hope they bring back the purple i'm i'm highly doubtful though they the Raptors branding department, they just, like, every year they come out with, like, hey, we made the Drake Canadian Tire Chevron the whole thing a little bit uglier, a little bit more boring. Air Canada, it's just, I don't know. I highly doubt they they would do that. It'd be, it'd be really cool. I bet they would sell a lot of jerseys. A lot of people really like it. But it just seems like too much of a hard pivot. You know, they stuck with, they stuck with the... Fred Siakam OG thing, which by the way, like not to rehash this because it's boring, but oh yeah, because I have this written down that Devlin just randomly brought up Norman Powell or Alvin talked about Norman Powell really randomly. It's just they were talking about the the intensity that the Raptors bring, and then Alvin's Alvin's like, you talk about Norman Powell, he always brings this intensity, and it's like nobody mentioned Norman Powell, but it's like why did they make the Norman Powell Gary trade if the whole thing was keep the Fred OG Pascal thing together? That still doesn't make any sense, but that's it's a long time ago. You know, land far, far away where that airplane is going. Um, doesn't make any sense, folks. You 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 would hope the purple jerseys would come back though, because it's it's just different. I think people really want the purple, even that. Uh, like third jersey they had with the purple um like triangle thing even that has like aged well just because it was purple even even the colorado rockies jerseys look kind of cool because they have a little bit of purple on them and you would own the purple and red market because no other team in the nba has purple and red like that would be your thing every every fucking team in the nba is red and white so and out of the 30 logos in the nba 16 of them are a basketball. It's just, it's so uncreative. In in baseball, it's none. In football, it's two. Two or football is one. I think it's none or baseballs. Most of the modern NBA logos are a basketball and the team logo or concept doing something to said basketball. Like for the Raptors, it's just the dinosaur claws clawing through a basketball. It's like wow, it's so it's so cool, it's so inspiring. It's like, oh, it scales really well, does it? When I look at the tiny little standing logos, the Pacers one sticks out, the Hawks one sticks out, the Raptors one doesn't. Just it's like the least distinguishable, least sexy. The jerseys fucking suck. I'm sorry, folks, if you've bought them, they fucking suck. They're awful. Like they're just they're they're terrible. I don't I don't like any of 
some people are like, oh, the the ones from 27, the first Chevron ones were not, I, I hate all of them. Uh, and red is like one, I mean, I got, I got a red, got a red water bottle here. Almost the hat's orange. All my shoes are red. I just have this, like I have red Converse, red Nikes, red Lucas, red Jordans, red. I got a red champions hat. So like for, for you to screw up red so badly that I hate it. It's just, I just think it's, it's disgusting. It's horrible, horrible jerseys, horrible branding. I don't understand the brand at all. Like Scotiabank Arena, they're playing like Limp Bizkit and the Barbra Streisand song. And you got owls on the jersey and the jerseys are gold and black. And it's like, what? I don't know what's going on. I, but I know I'm not the target market because I, I have, there's nothing about dinosaurs. There's nothing about, like in the original logos, purple was such a big part of it. And then lime green was like the off random color, which does work if you think about those old um, you know, like a Raptors kit and then you throw like lime green Converse or lime green shoes. I mean, it is pretty wacky, but it does kind of fit. Dinosaurs are green as well. I don't, I don't, I just don't get the gold and the, everything looks like affliction with like Canadian. T it's every Raptor, all Raptors merch over the last like 15 years looks like if affliction was forced to make like Canadian tire clothes, it's just, it's, it's awful. It's absolutely awful. And most of them were designed kind of around when I went to graphic school for, I wasn't in a graphic design program, but I was in a program that incorporated graphic design. And it's, it, it, it's kind of all from that era. And it's just, it's, it's so dead. It's so out of fashion. It was, it never was great. It's just clean. It's not going to offend anybody. It's, it's just like the music at fucking Walmart. I hate it so much. I fucking absolutely hate it. Um, trash clips. The Cleveland Guardians went from a racist logo to a baseball with wings. Creativity is dead. Yeah, that I had. Uh, I had an old Cleveland hat with the old logo. It was. I bought it because our starting point guard had it, and I was the backup point guard, and I wanted to be cool like him. So. It was an all white, except he looked good because he was a black guy and he wore earrings. So it was an all white hat. It was like all white pro fit with like the Cleveland Indians logo at the where hat where logos are on hats. Um, and I, yeah, I bought it because I wanted to fit in. But then I spilled coffee on it like a couple months in. I got laughed at for wearing that hat, by the way. But I do like the logo. Um. Oh, Mato is in the chat. Uh, oh, we got some cons consultations from Mato for, for free, by the way. I don't, I don't have to pay for these, I don't think. Uh, please keep the streams going throughout the summer. Now you, now you want the streams back. This is like Henry Ford when it's like, I want 400 horses, not a car. A Raptor player could fart and you can make a two-hour stream discussing Southeast Asia. Okay, I got to... I got to stop. I got to... I got to... Uh, Jason Poo, how do you feel about the Coyotes moving to Utah? Man, I, I'm, I had a lot of hockey jerseys when I was really young. Uh, the, the family my sister married into, they had four brothers who were all really spoiled and kind of wealthy and were all really into sports and were like quite a bit larger than me. They're all like six two, six four now, but I would just get all their jerseys that they didn't they would wear like twice and like, this isn't cool anymore. I need a new Jersey. So I, and then I would buy, I like, yeah, I get my own jerseys for Christmas and stuff too. But I'm pretty sure I had a, I had an old Phoenix. I guess they're the Arizona Coyotes now. Fuck. Yeah. Those old jerseys are sweet. When they rebranded kind of recently, it was really, I think I thought they were really bad. Um, I love the old, uh, it kind of reminds me of the old Arizona Diamondbacks same state kind of hat it kind of just gives that weird arizona feel but i mean arizona is just like all cuban on now anyway so it kind of makes sense that teams are leaving or making their branding like stale it happened in arizona man i was there for like five minutes once a trip to vegas ended up 
ended up kayaking down a river and ended up in Arizona somewhere. Uh, vegan grass. Scotty's rookie season gold dino jerseys were solid. People, I don't know. I didn't like that. I just, I think I hate black and gold. I'm sorry, folks. I just don't like it. It just reminds me of like restaurants I can't afford, limousines. It's just like very ritzy, affliction, Ed Hardy ish. Um, I just feel like I'd have to do cocaine if I wore that jersey, and I was always more of like an MDMA guy. I feel like MDMA is more like the dino jersey. So just give me the fucking dino jersey. Don't tease me with this black and gold bullshit. I don't want ha- I don't want any half measures. Uh, trash clips going from Q and on to Mormons. Yeah, shouts to uh, going from the Q and on Sham into Jimmer for debt. I don't know if that's is that that big of a jump. Really, they could probably they could probably have tea talk about like david koresh or something um was koresh mormon no i don't think koresh was mormon. sorry folks i don't think i don't think koresh is mormon um always thought the gold looked like piss not gonna lie hey i mean that's why that's why i got the gold this is like real piss this is actual piss color um i think sportsnet's Using my thumbnail design, by the way, just low, low key. They might be, they might be, folks. I think Yahoo Sports did as well. Before. Yahoo Sports Canada actually deleted its YouTube channel. I don't know if people know this. They had like Chris Boucher pod pods on there. CJ My- like loads of content. They just deleted the YouTube channel. So I think I need to. Um, I think for the off season, I'm going to make some compilations. I want to put all my Twitter like videos and memes and stuff just in a compilation and put it on YouTube. I know some people will be like mad about that or something, but I think there's a lot of stuff I've the po- good, not good, but stuff I've posted on Twitter, like video, just video clips and edits that I think if I just kind of put them all together in a video, that could be good. Probably do a Grady comp because it was his first season. And I think I made eight Grady videos, so that could be a good one. Maybe do a Will Lou Sports Night, you know, compilate Supercut since that's Sayonara now. Shouts to Sportsnet. <laughs> um, I predicted a Blake and Samson Sportsnet show back in February. So I also predicted Will and Alex would end on Sportsnet. So, yeah, if you want to find out what Sportsnet's doing in the next three to 24 months, just uh, go check out the feed. Savannah Hamilton's mom still follows me on Twitter. So can't say anything about her scoops. So what do you guys think about her scoops? I can't. I already lost, I already lost the corporate sponsor for... I don't, I'll, that's another video I should put out how I lost a corporate sponsor by getting a car dealership as a sponsor and then just showing Paul Walker footage and car crashes over the ad reads so I can't lose both of those things I can't lose can't lose the corporate sponsor and Savannah Hamilton's mom in the same year that's the season's already been bad enough but shouts to Sportsnet man um Larry Legend, I want to give you a golden shower for free. I have to pay for that. Um, trash Clips, I like Chris's podcast. That's pretty fucked. I like Amit Man's and CJ stuff too. Yeah, I may have taken a jab at the Amit Man CJ podcast in the NBA Chef video that I made. Um, basically, I just compared Amit Man to the Usher Yeah video. Because it's just like CJ talking about being in the NBA or like uh, something about X's and O's. And then Amit would just be like, yeah. <laughs> like that was kind of the, sh- that's what, that's what I saw when I watched the show. I don't know. Maybe it was, maybe there's some good stuff in there. I liked how fucked off Chris was about the podcast. Like usually when players have podcasts, they're just like really enthusiastic and it turns me off of it. Whereas Chris just was like, kind of had that vibe of like, I don't even want to be here. And then it was just Mike Roach, who was like really enthusiastic. And Chris was just kind of sitting back and on his couch, just like with a two on with his arms crossed, just being like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Um, I like how they released an episode every like seven months. Going to miss that. That was a weird one. Yeah, Yahoo Sports Canada. You know, another loss from this season. You know, we lose... Uh, yeah, Sports Canada, Sports Illustrated, Vice, 
Scotty Barnes got injured. RJ quickly. Deaths in the family. I mean, a lot of loss. Just just a, a lot of pain this year. Um, what a season, you know. Uh, vegan grass, Queensway Auto. Hey, this no, it's my joke. Let me let me don't don't turn my bits into reality. the The bit is that they bailed because of the Paul Walker car crash. That's a lot funnier than they just bailed on everybody. Uh, anyways, uh, Larry Legend. There's a feeling in Toronto that William Liu doesn't have what it takes to run a podcast. What? He had like the cringiest, imagine the cringiest middle managers you could ever imagine. Like imagine the people who go to a sport media college and they don't have the talent to be on air, but they want to be involved in the industry. So look at this guy at the speed out here. That's like me at the, the beach like that. So they become behind the scenes people and they make creative decisions for you, even though they didn't make it themselves. And then you get like, marketing and accounting and they come in and they're like hey we have this guy that you have no chemistry with and he doesn't know anything about the raptors he doesn't watch raptor games but he has a bunch of uh, readers and followers and so we're going to have you talk to him every single week at the exact same time and even in those parameters where they didn't create a twitter account for them didn't really do anything do like Alex created the Twitter account, which is now being run by somebody who uses capital letters. Wow. Just how the mighty have fallen. Um, I don't know what all these fucking people are looking at. Bar's filling, bar's filling up a little bit more. It's a, uh, it's got a Maverick shirt. No, I think I saw an Embiid Jersey earlier. Did the Sixers win today? Uh, trash clips. Maybe I like Chris in general. Yeah, the Chris Will Lou vid was fun to fun to cut up. I should just put that out, re put that out as well. Now the Yahoo Sports Canada is no longer. The video that I made of them is really what all that remains. It actually outperformed. I was outperforming Yahoo Sports Canada on SEO. Like I was cutting up their content and then ranking higher than them because. It would be like the Chris Boucher podcast. He's got a Red Sox jersey. Or he's got a Red Sox jersey on. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, they would. They would. It would be like the Chris Boucher podcast with like Thad Young on a couch with Mike Roach, and then you'd go into the metadata, and it would be tagged with like Scotty Barnes dunk, Vince Carter three sixty. Um, Emmanuel quick or I guess quickly was later, but yeah, it was just every like Raptors potential um, clickable thing was like in the metadata. So it's like, okay, that's bad. But then I don't know how much YouTube really uses that to rank stuff though, but yeah. So that's the only, so that, that video is the only, uh, only historical record that the meeting ever went down. Um, Chris is a cool dude. He isn't afraid of... He doesn't afraid of anything, says Mato. Yeah, that's why he is like KD and just like looks his name up on Twitter and argues with people with 70 followers whether or not he should be having a podcast or not. And maybe I made a video about that. Go look it up. Um, and maybe if you look at many... You know, Matt Devlin. Many people... There's a feeling. Many people have said that... Chris had several conflicting statements in his Willie segment where he's like, you better start writing about me positively. You better start doing that. And then 30 seconds later, he was like, I don't care what you say about me. I don't even want you to write about me. So I thought I cut that up in a way that was obvious. The point was made, but Hey, maybe I fucked up Mato, Just like I fucked up my content. According to you, uh, trash clips. You think the heat will be upset? With, well, oh, will upset the 76ers in the plan. Oh, God. People want my predictions. This podcast is sponsored by FanDuel. FanDuel Canada, who I believe to pick the Raptors today to beat the Heat. I think this, I think FanDuel Canada said 112 to 110 for the Raptors. I don't, I don't, maybe I saw that wrong, but 
So yeah, brought to you, brought to you by fan, brought th- this show brought to you by FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com. FanDuel it just doesn't sound doesn't sound good. FanDuel. Um, do I think they will upset the 76ers in the plan? Probably. Is that is that locked in? Are they? What are what are the updates? Are they? Is that going to be? Is that official now? Is the East? I think the East is done, right? Like all the games are. Yeah, all the games are finished. So. So what it's going to be? Did this? Are the Sixers in the plane? No. What's going on? I need a live. Uh, 2024 standings. What? What's? I'm I'm behind here, folks. Um, I don't know how. Okay, updated 34 minutes ago. That's good. Okay, here we got the brackets. So the it's the oh guys, it's not the play-in. By the way, I'm being uh, I'm being informed by the NBA.com. It's the SoFi. NBA, NBA, ugh. it's the SoFi NBA playing tournament. Philadelphia, Miami, 7 8, 9 10, Chicago, Atlanta. Okay. I think it's, I think it's really going to depend. I mean, everybody's going to say this. So it's not, this is not, this is not like a intelligent take, but it's really going to depend on how effective Joel Embiid can be with his knee injury how how often will he be on the ground that's going to be important for that um we've got so milwaukee slipped to the third seed so they're probably if they're able to make it out of the first round i mean cleveland they'll be playing cleveland i believe right i don't know how the play i don't know how the fucking i lost i don't know how the seedings work i'm too too dumb for that that's why. I, that's why I hate the plan. Um, Bulls, yeah, Bulls, Hawks. Can the Sixers Heat both advance? They can, right? Yeah. Isn't that isn't that the most likely thing, or am I an idiot that they both? Because it's like the winner moves on, doesn't then the loser gets to play? Yeah, I. I it will probably just be the way it's laid out right now with Miami at eight, Philly at seven, Indiana six. So that would be Miami Boston in the first round. That would be crazy. Then you, oh, you then you would have gotten Philly and New York if Milwaukee could have fucking won one more game. <laughs> Damn. But I guess Milwaukee's more likely to face Boston now in the next round if they can beat uh Evan Mobley, I guess. Big test. Big test beating Evan Mobley. I don't know. He's a budding superstar, according to Zach Lowe. So, could be difficult. I was like, what are these fucking people on the beach watching? I guess they're watching the airplane. The airplanes go by. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, folks. I don't know. Anybody else? Any final words? Um, Jalen McDaniels, two for seven. Missed a lot of, a lot of bunnies. Grady only one for five from three. Just not a, not a fun game. Hey, forty-one rebounds. I mean, Jordan War with eleven rebounds is kind of crazy. Um, he'd only go nine for thirty-six from three. But the Raptors somehow managed to do oh, a little bit better. Nine for thirty-four, so twenty-six point five percent. Yeah, you know, say say goodbye to probably a lot of this stuff. You would hope. Um, does kind of feel like the season flew by in a way, but was also was also painful. Um, you know, my condolences to people who had to watch this stream 
and had to watch these games. It's been uh, it's been pretty rough. You know, go support your local YouTube establishment or whatever. Um, yeah, excited for the playoffs though. That'll be. It's hard. It's hard to get into the regular season, as I talked about, because two thirds of the teams make the playoffs, and then the others get all the lottery picks. So it's like, what's the fucking point of the regular season? But the playoffs are fun. Got into baseball a little bit earlier than usual this year as well. I think the Blue Jays just did the Blue Jays just win. I had the Blue Jays game on during the Raptors game for a little bit. Um, yeah, Blue Jays 5-0 in the top of the ninth inning. So that's exciting. You know, Colorado Rockies, really, really good team. Um, will I stream after the lottery or the draft? I don't even know if I'll be alive for the, the lottery or the draft. We'll see. I take it day by day. You know, I live in the moment. Very Buddhist. Uh, iconic. Love you, bro, bro. Thank you for the streams. You are welcome, folks. Yeah, I don't really have any. I don't really have anything else. So, um, it's over, as Vince Carter once said. It's over. It's over, folks. It's over. I wish I remembered. I think 